Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to Test 2 Plus. My name is Trace, and this is a show where we cover one big topic and we break it into a few different episodes. This is the second episode of our series on dreams. Yesterday, we talked about how dreams exist, even though we don't know why. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about the dark side of dreams. I guess you could call it nightmares. So why do we have bad dreams? Like, why are some dreams just terrible? The thing is, dreams occur during rapid eye movement, and rapid eye movement is a part of sleep where your brain is processing lots of information. And that includes your emotions. So when you have feelings of terror, distress, or anxiety, then you're going to probably have a nightmare. You're going to dream about that. And of course, there's different gradations of nightmares. Some are awful, just like you wake up in a sweat, and others are just dreams that don't leave you feeling particularly good when you wake up in the morning. Nightmares, what we know about them anyway, is that they happen in the latter part of the night. They often wake the person up because they are so distressed, and they're not as common as you might think. Considering we're dreaming every single night, only 5% of adults are having nightmares where it's so severe and so frequent that it causes a clinical issue. They have to go seek help. But 85% of people experience nightmares. Some people, about a third or less, uh, experience it about once a month. That's not too bad. But some people, like 2 to 6%, experience a nightmare every single week. And that sounds awful. I would, I'm glad that I am not part of the 2 to 6%. But I definitely have bad dreams occasionally. I mean, I imagine you do too. You can tell me about them in the comments. What causes bad dreams, though? Well, no, most nightmares are stress-related. They're anxiety-related. Some are work-related. Uh, intense dreams are usually exist after trauma, after something bad has happened to you. Some people dream about something real that happened to them, car crashes or a death close to them. These are normal nightmares. However, you can also get nightmares from illness. They do seem to come when your body temperature is higher than it should be. And so a fever can cause nightmares. During REM sleep, your body's temperature control systems aren't working particularly well. They're not at 100%. So if your body temperature gets too high, then your body, for some reason, reacts really weirdly, and it can cause vivid nightmares. So that seems kind of dumb. <laughs> like It seems kind of stupid for your brain to do that to you, but perhaps it's trying to tell you something. Maybe it's trying to wake you up. But it also could be that it's forcing us to face our fears. Many psychologists believe that nightmares are a way for us to face that trauma, to process our fear and be able to get over it, again, in a way that's only in our heads, that there's no consequences in real life. You know, it'd be, if you're afraid of car crashes, you don't want to go get in another car crash, but your brain can run you through that to give you those car crash experiences and help you process it. This is a psychological technique that is used in clinical therapy. It's called exposure therapy. If you're afraid of spiders, they will give you a rubber spider and then help you get comfortable with it until slowly you work your way up to being comfortable with a real spider around. Because, <laughs> you know, this is again debilitating fears. There's also something called flooding, whereas you take uh, exposure therapy kind of the next level. If you're afraid of the dark, flip the lights off. That's flooding. It's all over. The therapy itself can be traumatic, but it can still help. And nightmares do this to you as well. So it's a way to process your emotions and to process your anxiety and move past it. In 60% of recorded cases where nightmares are occurring regularly, it's showing that a major life event was one of the onsets of that nightmare. So again, a car crash or a death in the family, maybe having problems at work, can cause nightmares. That's more than half the time, which makes a lot of sense. There's also, I don't know if you remember the movie, The Christmas Story, there was uh, when Marley floats up, the ghost of Marley, and, and, and he says, Scrooge says to him, oh, you're just an undigested piece of beef. There's actually a little bit of truth to that. Eating before bed in general isn't gonna do a lot, in terms of negatives to your body, but eating some things like beef actually raises your body temperature. Beef is very difficult to digest. Your stomach has to raise to 100 degrees and it's very hot in there and it's more active and it takes a long time. So bad dreams are possible, though not every time, obviously. So 
from what we know in the scientific literature, nightmares can be caused by an adverse reaction or to, to a drug or a side effect. Withdrawal from a drug. If you've taken a lot of sleeping pills and then you stop, you might get more vivid nightmares. It could be from excessive alcohol consumption or withdrawal from alcohol consumption. So these major shifts in your chemistry in your brain can cause these problems. You can also get nightmares from sleep apnea, which is a breathing disorder while you sleep, or narcolepsy. There's also sleep terror disorder, which is a whole different thing. Sleep terrors or night terrors are, are much worse. We get, it's, it's, it's something that psychologists don't actually know much about or why it happens, but they do know that it usually occurs in children and it's much more intense than a regular nightmare. Usually occurs at the lowest levels of heart rate, blood pressure, brain wave levels, but night terrors are a whole different thing. If you've ever experienced one, they're, they're just terrifying. There are also recurring bad dreams or repeated nightmares. And these are a series of nightmares under a, a same theme. And this is something that like, if you have recurring anxiety at work that you have to deal with, your brain is gonna try and make you deal with that emotionally while you sleep. And it's difficult. It sounds like not a great way to handle it, but if you can't process it when you're asleep, your subconscious is trying to make your brain process it while you're asleep, how are you gonna process it while you're awake? In the end, there is a universality to nightmares. It's kind of incredible, actually. In a study called The Universality of Typical Dreams, Japanese versus Americans, 21% of the United States and 16% of Japan had dreams of their teeth falling out. Have you had that dream? I've had that dream. It's not a good dream. That is a struggle with our own mortality, according to science. And it's interesting that it's universal. We have it, so do they. There's also dreams of falling, which has to do with losing control. There's dreams of public nudity, not in a fun way, like humility, that's, a, that's vulnerability. And then there are all sorts of other universal dreams that all humans seem to experience. And according to American Anthropologist, uh, a really great quote that I read in American Anthropologist says, typical dreams or shared kind of common dreams mark a public domain they intimate a common bond between us. I think that's great, that's great. We, ha we all have the same fears, we all have the same anxieties, we all have the same emotions, we all have to deal with them in the same way, and that's why nightmares exist. You probably have fewer now than you did when you were kids, because kids have them a lot more, they have a lot more anxieties and emotions to deal with that they're learning about, so hopefully you have less. But what's the worst nightmare that you can remember having? Why don't you tell us about it down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more Test 2 Plus. Come back here tomorrow where we're going to talk a little bit more about dreams. And if you can't wait that long, check out last week's episode on psychedelic drugs. It's really awesome.